In the last century, floodings killed hundreds of people and left many more homeless in London. Because of this, the city created barriers to protect itself. But like the flash floods that devastated England's capital city last July showed us, that was not enough. To make things worse, London is projecting it needs 66,000 new homes per year for the next two decades. That means new residential projects are emerging each day in flood zones around the city. This dichotomy raises the question, is it possible to expand safely to avoid crises like the one that hit London last summer? Well, here now to discuss is Jess Shankleman. She is an environment reporter for Bloomberg News and wrote today's big take, London's housing and climate crises are on a collision course. She's joining us now from London. Jess, thanks so much for being here. Everyone needs to take a read at your story because it's it's really wonderful. But I, I want to talk about these opportunity areas that uh, you discuss in your piece and, and how some housing development projects are still being approved despite some of these warnings that are happening. Why is that happening? How is that happening? Right, so you've kind of got straight to the heart of the issue, Jennifer. Um, the way, so I think what we need to first do is take a step back and look at these two different types of flooding. So those floods um, in 1928 and 1958 that killed hundreds of people were caused by the Thames River overflowing. And that has largely been um, capped by the Thames barrier in Woolwich, right in the east of London, where you've got these giant steel barriers that have been raised about 200 times in the last 40 years, every time there's a risk of river flooding, and that protects Londoners. But it also creates a false sense of security because Londoners think, right, OK, we've got the Thames barrier. Any water that comes in is not going to touch us. But there's another kind of flooding. And that's even more of a risk. And that's what we saw in July last year. And it happens when it rains a lot, very suddenly. And the drainage system, which was built during Victorian times for a city of 2.5 million people, not the 9 million people living there today, the drainage system takes as much water as it can and then just starts pushing it back up. And this happens a lot in cities because they tend to be covered by cement, concrete and any kind of non-permeable surface. So when the rainwater hits it, it runs very fast into the drains. Is is that what? Oh, go ahead, Jess. Well, so your your question was why is this um, why is this happening more? And there's a, a huge range of issues, but one of the issues that kept coming up when we were talking to different kind of governance bodies involved in environmental management and involved in governance of London, they said there's actually no one body to, that deals with surface water flooding. So when it comes to river flooding, the Environment Agency, which is the federal agency, they comment on every single planning application. They're in charge of making sure that people are protected. But surface water flooding is hyper local. So you might actually just need to, pe to speak to people in the streets and say, where is it when it rains a lot? Where is it that there's often a problem? Because that's where it's going to come up. And often people find that they don't know that they're at risk of surface water flooding until it's too late. Then they find that they've been deluged with water and then, and they're also uninsurable. And where in London are we seeing this happen, Jess? It's, I mean, it's all over. So we looked at, there's 28 already agreed opportunity areas. So they get extra help from the mayor of London to design these strategies to build new homes. And they're often in um, industrial areas that are being transformed into new developments. So we looked at one in East London, um, in on the edge of the Olympic Park, which hosted the games in, in 2012 and that was a, that's a huge area of regeneration it used to be factories that made all sorts of acrylics and came up in you know over the hundreds of years have come up with all sorts of incredible um inventions and now it's more like new york's meatpacking district lots of kind of cool hipsters and um factory style buildings and bars and that was deluged last year by by flooding just like many of the places across London. But we're also seeing places in East London, um, West London, like Hounslow, where they've identified large areas which can be developed with lots of often high rise buildings that can fit in the, the millions of Londoners that are people. I mean, people are coming here all the time. Like, you know, you see in any major, in any, any mega city, there was a, a kind of slight dip in people coming here during the first the first two years of the pandemic. But now 
people are coming back in their droves and, and rental prices are going up by 20, 25% very, very sharply. And people are struggling to find places to live. And people who are earning a decent wage uh, can't even get on the housing ladder. Wow. And uh, I mean, Jess, you mentioned the mayor at Sadiq Khan. I imagine he knows a lot of these issues that are happening right now. Is the government putting anything in place um, to sort of balance these two uh, crises, you know, affordable housing and also uh, climate risk and, and climate zone areas? Yeah, I mean, I've been following the mayor of London um, office for many, many years, even when Boris Johnson was the mayor of London. And one of the things that always strikes me is it's a very symbolic um, role. You know, they, they seem to have a lot of power, but actually they really only deal with transport and police. And when it comes to flooding, the mayor of London doesn't have an awful lot of power. When it, with surface water flooding in particular, each of the individual 32 boroughs has to make its own assessments. And I went and asked each of them, how many people have you got working on surface water flooding? Some of them, like Camden in North London, said we've got half a person a week dealing with this issue. And they're having hundreds of planning applications coming in that have to be assessed and they have to decide whether or not that's that's going to be a good project, whether it's going to be safe. Others like Enfield, which is on, more on the outskirts of Greater London, they have uh, four or five people working on it and they're doing some really amazing projects. And I saw this week they were even introdu reintroducing uh, beavers into the into their wildlife theme as part of a, a sustainable drainage project. Wow. And we know London, of course, has, has tried to sort of champion these uh, green uh, type of buildings. Uh, but Jess, I, I think what's really interesting, too, about your story is the reality of this is that this is happening everywhere, right? I mean, this is happening uh, in California. They're building on wildfire zones. You mentioned New York. Uh, is this just sort of the, the way of life now? Or, or are there actual protections that can be put in place uh, to prevent uh, even more catastrophe? I mean, it's such a big question when it comes to talking about climate policy, because obviously you need to take steps to try and reduce any climate change. But I think countries are increasingly realising, and we saw this at the Glasgow Climate Change Talks in November, that adaptation is going to be crucial because there's already some climate change locked in. We're already seeing more wildfires, more rainfall. So the question is, what can you do to try and protect people? Right. And it used to be maybe a couple of years ago, people said, well, should we do more flood protection um, schemes? Should we try and build up high so that people aren't hit by flooding? Right. Now, there's a really interesting move yeah. by local governments to right. try and introduce something. It's incredibly unsexy sounding, sustainable drainage systems, right. SUDS. But the idea behind it is to try to recreate the land so that it's almost like what it was before there yes. was, it was concreted over. Um, so you ha so it can absorb the rain instead of just sending it straight back into the into the brick line tunnels which then push it back up and create floods. Just